we're gonna find out as <laughs> both teams charge in against each other. Swapsy's looking for some early damage. Waz gonna be moving in. Takes a little while for the Outlaw Rogue to build up damage, but Waz usually gets these setups rolling pretty fast. I'm curious to see if z just runs at Chaz. Red Paladin actually does a lot of damage to Discipline Priest since it's mostly holy damage and not physical. Right now they're just focusing on defense, but Walrix is just taking so much damage from both Waz and Swapsy. He's been at 50% HP for quite some time. We saw a Blessing of Protection there to remove the blind, but now Looney is caught into a stun and Walrix got interrupted. He can't unending resolve. He's dipping dangerously low. He's managing to hold on to it for now. Waz grappling hook over for a gouge, trying to keep Looney locked in crowd control and deny healing. But now Looney is free. They make a swap to z -Pi. Half his HP is gone. Swapsy is just raining down damage onto the entire battlefield. z has got Crusade rolling. I think he would love to make a swap to Chaz very shortly. Yeah, we normally see this Chaz and Swapsy. They kind of stick together, just put out as much pressure as possible with the Discipline Priest, with the Elemental Shaman on any target they can. Meanwhile, Waz can send a sit in midfield, do a lot of setups with the gouges, with the between the eye stuns, with the blind. And then eventually they find those windows of opportunity where they can sort of push N all in. But Waz is going to be empowering Swapsy's damage so much with that Tricks of the Trade buff. I really think z chasing Swapsy could maybe be a mistake at the end of this game. He's spending so much time just walking to a target instead of actually hitting it. The Priest is not going to move very fast, so I, I feel like a target swap would be good. But now he's overextended and got caught by Waz. Immediate punish with the double stun. Tons of damage. Defensive fears to try and hold the Divine Shield, but it's not enough. z overextending. Waz immediately capitalized on that mistake, and they're going to bank a major defensive cooldown as a result. Yeah, that was the plunder armor used by Waz there to get the bubble from Zipai. So not the worst trade, but the problem with the Retribution Paladin is he is a very susceptible target here for Swapsy Waz and Chaz. So uh, although it might be good defensively, uh, it just it seems so scary when he pushes in. They can make these consistent swaps with the tricks of the trade. Zipai getting lower and lower, stun on Looney, and they ultimately take him down with a huge Earthshock crit. And that's what happens. Once Zipai's in there, he's very exposed, very vulnerable as a target. Method Black able to easily exploit that and take down game number one. What was that composition, Zico? What were they trying to accomplish with that one? Uh, coming out into this blind pick, definitely not what I expected to see. Uh, I think they were just trying to play a long game and try to win on mana that way, but uh, Zipai definitely played a little bit too aggressive and he got punished really hard for it. It stunned out of line of sight, and Chaz had a difficult time, uh, uh, Looney had a difficult time, sorry, to reach Zipai and uh, give him some heals, and this is one of those moments here. Was grappling hooks right in there, and you can see Looney is not really even caught in crowd control just yet. Gives Waz enough time to reset his stun, goes for the stun onto Zipai, and then swaps he following that up with the Earth Shock stun with that Sky Fury totem, and I mean, it's, it, it just comes down to too much distance because the Outlaw Rogue, he has to stun someone, then he has to get max combo points, then he has to use a finishing move, max combo points again, and then he can stun again. Now, in order to do that, you need to, uh, you can't really stun the healer and the red like exactly at the same time, like kind of how a sub rogue does it, where he can just kidney the healer and then step sheep shot somebody else. With the Outlaw, you need a couple of globals in between your stuns, and the fact that he's so far away actually allows Waz to stun z -Pi, get uh, reset his stun, and then when Looney gets into range, he can stun Looney, and then he can re-stun z -Pi. Uh, So it, it, it just, the, the positioning there at the end and the positioning that made z -Pi's bubble get used was a big problem for uh, XRB. Basically buys him those two, three globals that he actually needs to get off the additional stun, and Waz, yeah. can, <laughs> Waz can turn that into a victory very easily. And that's kind of my next question. Is this the comp that's going to be able to take down this pirate composition? Was it an execution problem, or is this comp just a little bit wonky? I, I think the comp is not that good, and it was also kind of bad execution. I think this, this is XRB just testing the waters. They're it feels like they're kind of stuck and they don't really know what they want to do here so they're just testing stuff and checking if it works or not testing the waters but we know these waters belong to king waz waz shark of the pirates infested. shark infested <laughs> waters but ultimately here do you think xrb is going to be able to find their bearings with a different composition I'm not convinced after that matchup. Like I said, I feel like the Retribution Paladin, he kind of has to push it. He can't play midfield and just attack Waz. It's not a winning strategy. He has to sort of overextend like we saw in that last game. And I think uh, Method Black is the team, and they have the right composition to really, really punish that uh, play style. <laughs> we end up seeing a 3-0 here. Obviously, it is XRB that has to play against Reformed for that fourth spot. And all of a sudden, Method 
gets their rematch. Super Tease, how do you think the entire day is going to shape up after getting that, that little preview of this series? I think it's very important for Method Black to have Waz in the arena. He's the youngest player on the team. I feel like he's just got fire in his veins. He's setting up these plays. He exploits positioning and really capitalizes on mistakes. And I think having that along with the veteran kind of like past BlizzCon lineup with Swapsy, he has to be in the arena with the other two members, Chaz and Raikou or Chaz and Swapsy. I feel like he's just pivotal to their team overall. And you can see like he just ends the game instantly. Next time that they move in into against Ascendance, I really think even though compositionally, maybe the demonology or the affliction and Demon Hunter is good into RMP, Was still needs to be in the game. Just period. He has to be in the game. <sighs> he's gotta play Demon Hunter. He <laughs> has well, he just needs to be in the game. He's phenomenal. <laughs> he's phenomenal. He's definitely an all-star, but one of the things I want to say, like Raikou? Swapsy, that is still a, a very impressive lineup. I, I don't know. I think if they can master a composition like that, that's when we definitely don't, just don't see them losing. What are they not going to have at that point? One of the biggest problems usually with teams that are really great multi-classers is they don't have the mage, right? It's usually where it kind of falls apart uh, because mage, for some reason, you guys don't. And no, nobody really can multi-class into mage very well. Would you disagree with that, Zico? We haven't really seen it done that many times. Like, when have we seen a demon hunter go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to pick up mage ever. the next one. It, it, it's never really happened. Sometimes, slowly, we see the mages branch out. Raikou's been an interesting one because it's, it hasn't been, oh, I'm going to pick up another wizard. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to randomly pick up demon hunter. It's not necessarily the most difficult class to pick up. I guess it does make a little bit of sense there. And then it was kind of Waz who went, okay, I'll pick up the moonkin when that was super good. And he still does have that moonkin. But th that's really kind of... Multiclassing 101, what we've really seen. Yeah, well, I, I think in general, multiclassing some of these casters can be a little bit more tricky uh, because you need to know a little bit more about uh, what the enemy can do to you and uh, how you're supposed to control the game and things like that. So, uh, definitely don't really see people multiclassing Warlock or Mage, uh, but we do see people kind of switching over to maybe a melee like warrior or something and i mean sometimes it does happen people multi-class mage as well but it's usually in a composition oh nice we get to see the uh, windwalker dk okay uh, and it's ruins of lord around so this is probably a gas pedal onto chaz uh, <laughs> waiting to happen here final resting place be. for chaz well, maybe i like that maybe. potentially that is going to be the question it seems like this may be the right composition here but yeah definitely uh See the multi-classing sometimes more yeah. on those melee compositions because usually it's how much uptime can I get? Yeah, uh, I just well, feel. I feel like crowd control is the biggest difference between melee and casters. Casters have crowd control diminishing returns, and if you're a melee who's never played with that and you don't know how to track it or when to use it properly, like when do I sh sheep a DPS? If I sheep him at the wrong time and can't sheep him at the right time, I just lose the game. So like that element of play with diminishing returns is just, you don't have any experience with it. A warrior has one stun every 30. He's got to maybe worry about someone else's stun, but within his own kit, he doesn't really have to self-manage that. And I think that's probably the main difference why we see more multi-classing from casters to melee and not melee to casters. Yeah, and that's the other thing too, right? If you have that shot color on your team, they're usually saying, okay, do you have Stormbolt? And he's like, yep, got it, it's on. You know, So there is a very different type of game that is mentally going on between the casters and the melee, but ultimately here, XRB to the moon has tried to flip the script a little bit. Will this composition be enough for them to even this up, bring it to a one and one, or are we going to see another 3-0? This composition seems like the right one. Execution going to be the question here. In the last game, in the first game of the series, it kind of seemed like XRB didn't have the right comp and definitely didn't have the right execution. Method Black, they have Waz in the arena right now. Is it going to be enough to set their sails straight to victory, Ben? Uh, we'll have to see. What I really want to see from XRB is like what we talked about. I want them to run at Chaz from start to finish make a beeline, never get off him for a second, spam purge him, go all in. Because I think that is going to be their best strategy. If you let Swapsy and Waz have too much time to make these setups, I think they're going to be able to punish some sort of aggression from this melee cleave. How crazy is it that both of the EU cuffs may end up coming down to tiebreakers for that fourth place spot? Very, very crazy indeed. XRB really wants to be able to win here, not only to get to the grand final, but Super Tease, they really want to be getting themselves in the position that they do not have to play against Reform. That's their lifeline, essentially. Yeah, I mean, they also just want the most amount of points so they can rely on that to qualify for BlizzCon rather than having to guarantee that first place finish at the summer final, which is maybe not looking as likely because they're struggling so much with this Pirate Rogue and so many teams, at, le at least from EU, have it prepared. Even NA is now starting to prepare it. So if everybody's bringing Pirates and they can't deal with Pirates, I don't know how they're going to do if they do make it to the summer finals. 
as they, Zico, they've had so much time to try to figure out how to beat Pirates. What is the real struggle when trying to beat that comp? For anyone at home that might be on ladder all the time and being <laughs> just facing Waz, uh, what really needs to be done to try to beat this outlaw? Outlaw is just good against uh, these double caster comps or these uh, caster comps that want to drag the game on forever, like Warlock Warrior or uh, Warlock Elemental, these things that XRB very much runs. So they need to get off of those comps and pick up a setup-based comp, something like Jungle, something like RMP, has a very easy time dismantling this uh, Outlaw Ellie. Problem is, they would have to pick up three new classes and learn a setup based comp. It's too tall of a mountain to climb. So. Well, let's see if the Windwalker DK is going to be enough to climb that mountain, enough to tie up this series, or if Method Black will find themselves on match point. I just want three Smork icons to appear over the frames on the right side of the screen. If they don't run it, Chaz, I feel like that's the biggest mistake they could make. Yeah, Waz uh, looking for an opener here. You can see Z5 slowly moving in. Swap is going to try to delay that opener as much as possible. Blizzo into the cheap shot. Paralysis on Waz as they run in onto Chaz. We need to see the offensive purchase coming in from Looney if they want to get this damage in. Fist of Fury is done on Chaz. He's not responding with anything just yet. There's the Archangel. There's the Rapture. But it looks like that's enough to keep him alive. Looney not triggering out of the blind. He doesn't see Plunder used. He doesn't want to get swapped to. But z had to burn a lot of cooldowns to stall this non-trinket on blind out. Now Waz is trying to just capitalize on that. Maybe even look for a swap at the end of that crowd control and put Looney even more behind. I don't think Looney can afford to sit all this crowd control. They need the purges and he's just going to die. There's just so much damage coming up from Waz and Swapsy, and Looney is just not particular to this aggressive play style, I feel like. You need a trinket. You cannot sit a full blind into a sap, into a between the eye stun. Like, it, uh, uh, sure. the blind and purge. Yeah, blood, uh, plunder armor is really scary, sure. But it, you need a purge. You're not going to do any damage to a disciplined priest who has Archangel and Rapture up unless you are offensively purging. So their strategy is basically completely wasted with that defensive play. And that's what we've criticized them before in the past. They need to just play aggressive if they want to win a matchup like this. This isn't the comp. That was strategy. That was straight up strategy there, Zico. Well, yeah, pretty much what Van already alluded to. I mean, here Chaz has Archangel Rapture, and instead of being on 20%, uh, he's just at full HP because Looney can't purge him. And then here, double fair, swap to Looney, still doesn't use his trinket. Plunder is active right now, by the way. And then instead they use anti-magic zone. Uh, even here, if he trinkets that stun and they save the zone, that would still not be, uh, like, a, a really terrible situation to be in. They did force out Chaz Trinket right there at the end, so they still had some kind of windows to work with there, but just didn't, didn't use enough spells. Just need to Trinket blind, hold down Purge. Before the next uh, DR comes up, before you think you're going to get stunned or hexed or whatever, you drop that Spirit Link to keep your team uh, healthy and aggressive, and then you just you play for the one-minute game. It's Win a, or lose in one minute. It's That's a, it. It's a strategy Looney has. He's always trying to make the most efficient trades with his yeah. cooldown. Always wants to get the best trades. But sometimes in these matchups, it's not about getting the best trades. It's about <laughs> going all in. That's what he has to do. Hey, make every single button light up before the game is over. Just press absolutely everything and hope for the best. To you you to, it's the right strategy. You have to steamroll a priest. You, you have to get that first stun. He has to trinket it right away because you have the offensive purges. If you don't make him trinket that first stun, he was already sitting in such a good spot because he didn't trinket the first asphyxiate. That means the next stun, he gets to trinket out of that, and he just rotates and has way, much, way more time than a priest normally has in that situation. Now what do they do? What does XRB do headed into the next game? I mean, I think it is clear that the strategy needs to change. Do you think they stay on the same composition and maybe actually try to just... Do what you said, Smork, go face, hit all the buttons. I mean, Looney just needs to, like, turn off the light switch on his brain that he's using because he's trying, he's overthinking it. It's like, you just run at the priest. Nothing else matters. Blind for the longest crowd control? I don't want to be crowd control for eight seconds because I can't press purge for eight seconds, so I'm getting out of this. Oh, I got stunned? Just zone me. Okay, I survived the stun. Purge time. And just run down the priest. Like, that should just be the only goal is to press purge as many times in the game as possible without dying and end it. Just end the game but they're not doing that they're just trying to say like oh well i can sit this because they didn't use a cooldown oh they swapped to me oh zone should be enough and i think that might have been maybe more inexperienced on that looney thought oh well zone will be enough so i don't need to trinket but he should have either trinketed the blind or at least trinketed the stun as soon as it happened with plunder committed it, it just seems like they're not ready to take on that different play style they're a phenomenal defense team but 
aggression is where they're lacking. And How long have we been saying that, though, now? Yeah. I, I mean, that, that's the real thing. We, we've said this week in and week out, and it just appears to be their biggest weakness, Zico. I mean, we, we've said just how good Looney really is. One of the best healers in the game. So good at staying on script. So good at preserving things for when they need them the most. Walric's the same way. I mean, he holds onto these cooldowns, and you're like, what on earth is he doing? And then all of a sudden, he's going to have his wall or things of the like when they need it the most. But every time they're in a scenario like this every time that they don't need to be playing that style they seem to crumble yeah i mean it just comes down to i guess the mixture on the team as well i mean we got warwick's very much you know he's a warlock so he's by default going to be a more defensive player then you have zipai again also plays very defensively always plays with warlocks blizzo what did we praise him for last year being the master of peels always keeping his teammates alive yeah. in situations when they should be dead so you have a team that's literally all defensive players so it's really hard to get that that offensive input and try to make something work on the opposite side of uh, of the wow play style so to speak mm -hmm. and this is something i criticized method black for as well because method black was the opposite they only had aggressive players they had Mipoike, they had uh, they had the raikyu they had waz they were all you know on your throat constantly and they couldn't play defensive but then they added in swapsy swapsy very much being a super defensive player brought them that perspective and all, all of a sudden we're watching method black essentially dampen xrb and force them to play the way method black likes to play well and then you have Chaz as well who i i feel like one of the things that Chaz is so good at is being right in the middle yeah i, I feel like Chaz is not necessarily the most offensive not necessarily the most defensive but he's right in the middle then you have some very aggressive players some very slow players all of a sudden this team can just do absolutely everything and they find themselves in a 2-0 position now xrb has locked in the windwalker dk again this is going to determine not only who plays in the grand final but it can also determine that rematch happening that that tiebreaker it's not a rematch it's a tiebreaker obviously it is a rematch because of the amount of history that we have but it is a tiebreaker for that fourth place at the land who is going to go because right now method black is about to just set up the rest of the day xrb going to play the windwalker dk again is there anyone on the desk right now that does not want to see them just sit on Chaz? anyone no they need to sit on Chaz. we need to see if they can get this aggression going if they can't, most likely we are going to see that bonus round today. Oh, Seiko, what do you think the chances are that we go 3-0, I don't think XRB reformed. Quick math. I don't think XRB versus reformed. If we get that a tiebreaker matchup, I don't think it's going to be uh, a 3-0. I think that's going to be a bloodbath. Five, game five <laughs> today has definitely been a bloodbath i think that's the best way to design uh, to describe it i mean we start off with two of the quickest series that we could possibly have now we are just it, this is absolutely insane xrb just needs to figure something out here will they find their aggression on ash main's fall this one is for all the cookies in the jar method black can set themselves up to go to that grand final and set xrb up to lose their lifeline and need to play in a tiebreaker yeah or looney's gonna be oh, okay he actually changed i was gonna say he's playing relentless and i think it's a horrible decision he goes to the trinket uh, i think that's very smart Blizzo using Ride the Wind to get to target, but Zipai wasn't in it. He's trying to make his way over. Now he's an anti-magic shield as well, but Looney's on the other side of the map in a route. Looney needs to get over there and start purging. He looks for a hex on Swapsy. Good crowd control. Swapsy trinkets that. He knows that they're going to all in. He needs to support Chaz. This time around, Looney's right on top of Chaz. I'm curious to see what does he do with the blind. He's sitting in it again. I, I don't agree with this. I mean, he's going to get away with it. This time they trade out zone on Zipai. Looney is still sitting in crowd control. He can't purge. Chaz is basically sitting there like, thank goodness he didn't drink it because these powered shields would just be stripped off. Now Chaz is trying to kite across the map. It's likely that he trinkets. Looney sat through all that crowd control. Now he needs to get aggressive. He used his trinket. They need to start getting the purges rolling. Looney's going to jump in. Finally, some aggression. Yeah, the thing is, Chaz didn't have to use his rapture in that opener. So he didn't use his trinket in the opener. He didn't use his rapture in the opener. And now, because Looney sat the blind once again, Chaz is going to be completely fine. And it seems like XRV to the moon is just way behind on this healer race. And Waz still has plunder. He can make a swap at any second to Looney or just kill Zipai. They've overcommitted defensives. But I think in the incorrect order, and it seems like aggressively, they're falling more and behind. There's the swap. 
swap. There's the double fear. Looney could easily disappear, but if paralysis on Waz denies the follow up, he can switch Earth Shield to get Astral Shift up. Looney survives the swap. Now they've got to start pushing down on the gas pedal. Looney needs to start getting aggressive on Chaz. They've got him in the middle of the map. They can purge him. Looney's right there, just waiting, trying to get through the interrupts. Gets gouged as well. Stormkeeper. Now they swap over to Zipa. He's locked down in a stun. Not able to use the anti magic shield. They managed to finally get Chaz's second trinket. There's a big opening to kill Chaz. Looney's team just needs to keep this going. I'd love to see a preemptive spirit link moving just a little bit forward into this match. Yeah, Zipa and Blizzo finally having a lot of uptime on Chaz, though. He's forced into the paint suppression. No defensive left. Looney in a lot of trouble, though. Caught into the stun. Do they have the damage to take him down? Yes, they do. Method Black playing that game phenomenally defensively, finding these opportunities onto Looney as well, and ultimately will close out this series 3-0. to zero. And they set their course straight back to the Grand Finals. This is going to be a very, very exciting Grand Final, and now I believe we have a tiebreaker on our hands as well. So we are going to have both of those series today. Reformed is going to be ready to play against XRB. That is going to be a good one. Let's preview that really quickly after we break down this series. But how was Method Black able to do this in a 3-0? Well, it comes down to the fact that XRB, they're kind of just fishing at this point, and uh, they're just fishing up sharks pretty much they don't really know how to deal with the pirate they don't they're trying out different comps and this last game was their best game for sure but again in the start when you stun up Chaz he has to use his string head if Chaz sits that stun comes out on about 80 percent can just top himself up without even using rapture you are literally a minute behind in the game at that point you need to have a better offense uh, still though they made, it, uh, they, made, they made a pretty good effort here. They uh, did force all the cooldowns from Chess, the Pain Suppression, and two Trinkets. So they technically needed one more stun to actually win it. So had they forced something more in the opener, this last stun would have probably been a kill on Chess. So uh, a better performance for sure from XRB, and this comp could be the answer they're looking for, but they need to practice it more. Absolutely insane, though, that this is the way that the, the day shaped up and this is the way that the entire season shaped up. I'm so excited to actually see the rest of the matches for today. With all of this, though, I, I think we probably have a pretty clear prediction, Memruki, of how we think this cup itself is going to end before we even do get to the tiebreaker match. Well, I'm not so sure. I feel like, go. yeah, I feel like Method Black, maybe they could learn from some of the mistakes they had in the previous series versus Ascendant. Maybe they decide, you know what, we don't want to try to counter comp them. We're going straight for the RMP mirror. They're going to be starting 0-0. So not the worst option for them, because like we said, it has been so back and forth between these two teams. I'm just curious to see, like Super T said, do they need to have Waz there in order to be pulling down these wins? The RMP mirror as well, when we get to the grand final, it is no longer this best of five. It is going to be the best of seven. So you need four to be able to take it. So we can see so much RMP versus RMP action. Yeah, potentially. I mean, they tried to warm up on the Warlock composition. They got completely smashed, even though it's supposed to be a favorable matchup. I think it's important for them to utilize Waz moving into the grand finals. Oh my goodness, yeah, it is just so insane to think about that. All of that is going to lead into the bonus round as well, essentially trying to figure out who is going to be going to land in the grand finals. The main thing that we need to be thinking about isn't necessarily the prize money either. It really is going to be the points. Obviously, both of these teams are already going to be going to the land, but Super T's expertly noted it a little bit earlier on in the day, Zico. All of these teams need to be thinking about their overall points for the year as well, because that is one of the best ways to to guarantee qualification of BlizzCon. Yeah, and so if people aren't familiar, this is kind of how the year works. We have three seasons, so we just had the spring season. You get a bunch of points, depending on how well you place in those tournaments. Then the top four point earners go to a land tournament. Then after that land tournament, you will have uh, those points stored away safely in a little box somewhere. And then you have a new season, which is this season, the summer season, with everyone having a clean slate of points uh, as, as far as a land um, uh, qualification is concerned. Yeah. Uh, so you accumulate as much points as possible you play in the summer uh, final land and then the points that you got this season will be added in that box to the points that you got in the spring season and then once three seasons has been played the top point earners get a qualification spot for blizzcon and uh, the people who also won the lands will also get a spot at blizzcon so right now it's reformed lands box blizzcon if i understood correctly but it's time to let these teams out of the box zico we are 
going to head into the grand final when we return. Ascendant versus Method Black. We've already told you about this one. Right after that, we get to jump into all the action with the tiebreaker. Reformed versus XRB to the moon. That's going to be going down after the grand final. And the stakes in that going to be super high because, as we mentioned, we already know that Ascendant and Method Black, they are going to that land. They're playing for points right now. They're playing to try to guarantee that they don't need to win the land to be able to go to BlizzCon. But Reformed versus XRB, they need to put it all on the line to see who's going to land. Who do you think is going to take the grand final chat? Obviously, this is a rematch, but we know this can go many different ways. We could see completely different compositions, or we could see the same one play out with different strategies, maybe a little bit cleaner. Let us know what you think. Is it going to be ASC for Ascendant, or is it going to be MB for Method Black? We're going to find out in just a few short minutes here. When we return, we are going to close out this tournament with the grand final. Find out who the best team truly is in the EU. What comps are we going to see? Is it going to be a mirror or is it going to be another attempt to counter comp? It's a rematch after this.